Hey, Craptaculars, it's time for another episode of The One, the only, the original Cinema Craptaculus. If you're already a subscriber, we thank you and hope you enjoy all the shows here on the channel. If you haven't reviewed our show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to right now, please give us that five-star rating and maybe write a few nice things about it. Your awesome review of our show would be a lot more valuable than, uh, say, for Smartless or the Joe Rogan experience. If you want in on the chats and fun social stuff, follow us on Instagram and on Twitter, at Craptaculous. That's at C-R-A-P-T-A-C-U-L-U-S. Maybe you want to recommend a series or a pop culture topic for the geeks to discuss or a movie for us to review. For those of you new to this show coming up, Cinema Craptaculous takes a lot of movies that are right in front of you that maybe you're thinking of watching or just watched and you want to talk about it. Well, we're like that awesome group in the kitchen at someone's party and you get to hang with us. So let's get this party started, okay? Hello, and welcome to Cinema Craptaculous, where we say a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one, just a lot easier to make fun of. This is John, and with me is my uncrappy co-host, Dave. Stephanie can't be with us today. Ah, but today we have a special guest, you know, our recurring favorite, Hi. Ty Freer. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, it's Ty. It's me. It's Ty. Hi. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me once again. As they say in France, Ty le frère. <laughs> That's so much better. That's so much better. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me once again. In America, he's freedom freer. <laughs> he's freedom freer. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, my freedom freer flag is just out of view, I think. Uh, uh, very yeah. expensive uh, Etsy job to add your name to an American flag. but um, Ty, you are a, uh, a TV writer. So uh, how are things going right now? Uh, yeah, any uh, big news in the writing front? Nah, not really. Uh, I imagine oh, you okay. haven't been yeah. on Twitter or the news at all the last seven, almost eight weeks. Uh, my life, my <laughs> life involves a lot of picketing, a lot of uh, going to to Disney is my preferred spot, my preferred location. It's very spread out. There's a lot of space there, which is nice uh, <laughs> for holding a sign and walking around for several hours. But uh, yeah, that's 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 been my life mostly. Uh, uh, hoping to get back to work soon if uh, the AMPTP uh, gives us a fair deal. So that is Ty, my. I'm surprised that you didn't go to guilt. Warner Brothers. Isn't that where you, uh, you know, you and your uh, your cosplay buddies dressed up as Justice League members and and had the sign saying "Release the Snyder Cut"? Weren't you part of that crowd? I was a part of that crowd. That was several years ago. And guess what they did? They released the Snyder <laughs> Cut, and that's just that's just proof that that picketing works. Honestly. Now, were you dressed as the Flash or were you Green Arrow? I, I just can't remember. Uh, I was just Ezra Miller, just the man. I was dressed <laughs> as the man. <laughs> as the character. Yeah, it was very. It was. It was before that a lot of bad news came out, so it was popular at the time, and, yeah. and uh, I wouldn't repeat it now. <laughs> I, from what I hear, that picketing led directly to January 6th insurrection. <laughs> it did. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I, I, I refuse to comment on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not taking yeah. any responsibility, Dave. No responsibility. Ty, I thought you looked great under grilling by Liz Cheney and Adam Kissinger. You held know, cool. It was... <laughs> yes. Thank you. It's lighting. Good lighting, mostly. Well, we're here to, um, you know, review a movie. That's what we do at Cinema Craptaculous. And... Um, Ooh. I would call this a summer movie because in any other sort of weird, non upside down world, this probably would have been a like a cinematic release in the summertime. You know, back when I was a kid, it would have been like you know Red Dawn or, or well, or, you know Rambo. You know that kind Rambo. of Rambo. Well, it's funny because Chris Hemsworth, <clears throat> who is me a part of our little review today, was in the remake of Red Dawn. That just came to me. Mm. So shall we uh, jump into it? Welcome, Ty. Thank you, Chris Hemsworth and the Russos take off the superhero costumes. And replace superpowers with superpowered guns in Extraction 2. Here's the rapid recap to catch you up. Rapid recap! Okay, so at the end of Extraction 1, Chris Hemsworth's character, Tyler Rake... Wait, that's his, that's really his name? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Tyler Rake fell off of a bridge and was presumed dead. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't see Extraction 1. But he wasn't dead. Just really injured. And they save him, facing the possibility of hanging out in the most beautiful cabin in the most beautiful woods in the world. Tyler Rake has the need, the need for speed killing. 
So some guy comes in who I don't know who he is, but I know he's important because he's all Nick Fury-like, and he has a job for Tyler Rake, a job only Tyler Rake can do. Rescue a family who's living in a prison to be close to the husband who is in the prison because he's part of some sort of Eastern Bloc mafia, and they uh, are uh, they're going to... Uh, you know what? Let's get to the blowing up and the killing. Tyler Rake gets the family, which starts a two-hour chase sequence that pretty much goes bang, 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 boom, helicopters, explosions, trains, buildings, bang, boom, glass breaking, people fall, car chase, more people die, church, stab, 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 dead, 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 the end. I think that was it. I think that just kind yeah. of covered it. So, yeah, it was good seeing you guys. Was, uh, <laughs> that was it. There's not more to say. Oh, wait. What we thought of it. You're right. Well, there is more to say. Oh, that's true. There is that. There is that. <laughs> um, I, I got to tell you, again, uh, one of the things with this one, I just had no... I, I had, besides the fact that he had to go save the family... I had no idea what was going on. Like, I don't know why he had to save the family. I don't know why they were bad guys. I didn't quite catch the, like the, like the bad guy who was chasing him throughout the movie and the bad guy he kills in the prison are brothers. But that's all I kind of know. I mean, this movie, look, I enjoyed the killing. Uh, I mean, the violence was nuts and the action was insane. This is a modern day Rambo movie, but. That I, I had no idea what was going on. And I don't know if it was worse for it or better. <laughs> well, I think we should back up a little bit because I, I actually did see Extraction. And, mm. uh, boy, the uh, the intellectual foundation was very much laid in that masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, so obviously, you know, th this film, I, the first one came out during the pandemic. And um, it was always next Netflix's intent to release it. And this was before they started really positioning themselves as an action kind of go-to, which I think they're doing, you know, they now have Arnold Schwarzenegger as their, um, what is it? Action film ambassador. They did a, uh, actually a pretty fun yeah. promo campaign with him. I think their new tagline is fuck comedy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, comedy. So 2020 yeah. <laughs> let's do action. Netflix. Dun dun. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, I, I think the first one, you know, it had the Russo brothers involved and Hemsworth was, you know, a big get. But they were spending a lot of money on action films. They had that Six Underground with Ryan Reynolds, which we reviewed. There yeah. was the, uh, there were at least two with uh, Will Smith. So they definitely were not gun shy with the first one about dumping money. You know, they shot it in India. It took place in India. And they really wanted to um, kind of do some groundbreaking stuff with combining CGI and practical stunt work. And then there was this sort of bravura scene where he's he's in one of the, the sort of I hate to say slums, but, you know, one of those really low, low income apartment complexes. And there was like, you know, a one shot where he's going through killing all these guys. And when we say one shot in the world of these sort of cheaper digital films, we know it's it's, you know, 80 shots. But they try to, you know, make yeah. it seem. Oh, oh, oh. And, you know, hit the premises is he's kind of like one of those guys looking for redemption who is hired to, you know, rescue uh, someone by a rich person who. And in this case, it was the son of of some, you know big powerful Sam prompt. it was the son of Sam he was to rescue the murderer of New York 1970s well, cut to the final big gun battle and he's befriended the kid and the, you know kind of had a bond with the kid he's rescuing and he gets shot in the neck and not just like any shot like one of those ones where it's like like literally like half his neck. like a JFK back into the left yeah, I mean, he's, he is the look on his face and the music and, and I'm and sorry is it too soon for JFK jokes or references? a little bit it's because pretty it's pretty insensitive okay honestly, I Dave. think Seinfeld kind of blew the lid off that no pun intended but yeah so he uh he clearly was was DOA and then he falls I don't know like 60 feet into uh, you know, what is it? The Yangtze sewage. Yeah. Sewage like running. Sewage. Yeah. Yeah. Where people bathe and, and defecate. And that's not an environment for an open wound. Trust me. Much less the 20 on his body. But apparently he lives. And at least yeah. this film addresses that. Well, this film is the perfect sequel because it asks the question, what does Tyler Rake have to live for? And then they provide an answer and you're like, Thank God, because now I know what he has to live for. Apparently, he's married to the sister of a woman who's married to the Eastern Bloc Mafia. Like, uh, ex-wife. It, it ex-wife, so ex-sister-in-law. Ex-wife. 
Excellent. Uh-huh. But still, you know, someone who's kind of family. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think those family reunions are like? Like if we're, <laughs> right. we're going to make it because the whole point, right, is like, let's make it personal. Right. So they're the connect, the, yes. the rescue scene is more than just some random person. But it's just such, it's such a delightful stretch to me. It's just so, <laughs> so absurd. Um, At one point I wrote down in my notes because after he rescues them, uh, the son is like, you killed my dad. You killed my dad. And Chris Hemsworth is like, listen, come on, listen to me. He was going to kill your mother or whatever he says. But the way he said, hey, listen to me, I was like, what is he, his stepdad or his uncle or something? Turns out he is. he's his <laughs> uncle. We find out five minutes later. <laughs> oh, it's his uncle. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, John, can I, uh, can I ask a question real quick? Uh, are we, is the audience to assume that he died at the end of the first one? Well, that's a good question in these types of films. No, there's a, a moment where we sort of see, you know, some times passed and the, the rich kid that he rescued, the sort of son of whatever Indian crime lord who's, you know, kind of learned a bit of life uh, on the run with Chris throughout the film. He's swimming and then you see a camera's point of view through the water uh, poolside and you see that blurry if, underwater of Hemsworth's character of Tyler sitting in a in a deck chair just like looking at him in the pool so i was like is that meant to be like kind of like a he's wish casting or he's seeing tyler's ghost and the ghost is now following him or he's alive and he's alive but but can literally freely walk into a place where he you know uh i yeah they they definitely left it up open but uh it, the one thing about the first film is is you you don't really get a clear sense of his loss. You know that his he had a child who died and he's not with the woman. So this film you know takes that baton and runs with it, where we learn that the son what is he he died of cancer and it, it was too much strain on him during the treatment. So he you know allowed himself to be deployed to Afghanistan and his wife never forgave him and then they divorced. But but to Ty's original point, did he know that his wife was? Uh, sister to you know an eastern bloc drug lord's <laughs> wife or oligarch's wife and and if so did it make things awkward at these family reunions or did they actually have a lot to talk about yeah probably the latter right that's what you want in yeah. any family reunion you just want any kind of connection even if it's like tertiary so it's less awkward so i think you're right maybe that was like they were the, the ones connected to each other at the reunion, you know, sharing a bucket how many of people chicken. You killed this, how many people you killed this week, Tyler? Yeah, yeah, uh, talk about uh, murder. Well, actually, it was, yeah, it was last month I did all the killing. Right? You gotta pass the all time. the killing was last month. I've taken a, a, a month off. <laughs> I actually got shot in the neck, and I've been recuperating. That, that had a lot. <laughs> There's a lot on my plate right now. <laughs> so you want to talk a little bit about that rehabilitation process? Because we got right into like a Christian Bale Dark Knight Rises moment where like, I don't need this cast. It was Rocky Four <laughs> training montage all the way. He's in Russia. It's snowing. He, he, he has like a sled of rocks. And, and like you said, he realizes what he has to do. And this is what I love about these type of movies. Every time the manly man realizes what he has to do, he takes off the sling. And he's like, I'm going to take off my sling and do some push-ups and then get strong. And come <laughs> back from... This bone doesn't need to heal because I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of wish like a doctor character would sporadically check in on him. Like you, you've still got that <laughs> cast on, right? Like you're not you're not doing like crazy training. <laughs> but, yes. Uh, yeah. You know your bone. The bone can heal improperly, and that can cause severe damage for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, you should have like had a limp the whole the whole movie. That would have been like some good character work, you know? Yeah. Like Hunchback or something. Uh, this movie takes place exactly like right where the last movie in between where the last movie ended. You know, he falls off of the bridge. And then they rush to him and save him. And it's been nine months. And then when when the Nick Fury guy comes, and he has six weeks from that nine months to get completely better. So in nine months and six weeks, in ten months and a half, he recuperates 100%. Oh, don't forget, he was in a coma, too. It wasn't like he just had, like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, like his brain was impaired. And, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, he wasn't a Rhodes Scholar before he got shot. But still, you need to have some of the acumen. But, by the way, just so you know, they, they introduced the Idris Elba Nick Fury character in this film. He was not in the uh, last was, one. I... So he shows up. And don't forget, they don't know each other. And I'm thinking, oh, it's a Thor Heimdall reunion. This is fun. But, um... But he's, they, they, they kind of pulled him out of nowhere and made him, you know, his handler. 
I, I was so surprised Idris Elba was in this. Like my jaw dropped. I was like, what? Oh, okay. Maybe that was like a partner in the first one. And it's like, oh no, the way they're presenting him, like you say, makes it feel like a new relationship. And it made me a little sad for yeah. Idris. The idea that he's like <laughs> jumping into this, like uh, this role in a Netflix action sequel. <laughs> oh, he's basically which, Higgins from Magnum PI. Yeah, yeah. He's got like 15 lines. And to be fair, I thought he's very charming. I thought Idris was actually really good. At this. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, they could bring it's cl- not, not to jump to the end, but we do have the uh, potential for a third one. And it'd be nice to see them oh, yes. maybe get some action chops, you know, maybe they yeah. go on a mission Team, together. Teaming up. Yeah. I, in that, in that Idris scene, I wrote down this line that I thought, would be a more interesting movie uh uh when that when edris is trying to talk him into this this you know this uh very dangerous extraction uh at one point uh hemsworth says i don't have any friends <laughs> which <laughs> which but he doesn't say it with, like with any sense of like sadness or regret it's just like a fact like i don't have any friends and i would like to see the movie where we just follow him for an hour and a half just trying to make friends. This weird, this weird guy who's murdered presumably hundreds of people. Super handsome, uh, you know, just like going to like a like a lodge, like a local like you know lodge, and just trying to make a conversation. Yeah, yeah. But I was also disappointed that uh, his name wasn't like Jack Extraction. Like I, I kind of love. <laughs> Can I just say that in Jack all of these Strash. films, yeah. whether it's Mission Impossible or or TV sh- series you know, um, where there's a a crack team. It is extremely easy, whether you're Black Widow or you are Ethan Hunt or now Tyler Rake, to break into high-security prisons. Super easy. You just need, like, you know, the guy who's got, like, the computer who can, like, hack in and remotely open all of the doors and get you in, who who can hack into all the security cameras. Like, these Eastern Bloc countries, if they really want to sort of you know, spend their money well, it might be on their prisons because they're very easy to bust into. <laughs> or at least a backup electrical system <laughs> because they, they just turned it off and they were like, you have five minutes. Yeah, or, or maybe pay their guards enough so they don't have to take bribes. to Because you know, that's how we got in in the first <laughs> yes, place, right? He gave them yeah. like uh, $100 or something. And it's great. Like you say, Dave, five minutes. You got five minutes. Well, I think <laughs> Winona Ryder breaks into a Russian prison in Stranger Things pretty easily too, if I recall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we're really onto something here, guys. Maybe this feels like the start of a really deep dive podcast about the Eastern European prison <laughs> systems. And honestly, yeah. and I and and not to be rude about the aesthetics, I feel like most uh, Eastern European prisons I see uh, portrayed could use a paint job, right? Have you seen the interior? Yes. It's all like very desolate yeah. looking. It's all very old. It's like nineteen fifties <laughs> paint that's that's flaked off. Well, and have anybody yeah, of yeah. these on these sort of art, art crews been there? Like, what if it's completely off? What if it's like like shiny metal and it's it's really actually <laughs> high tech? Yeah, yeah, and everyone's comfortable. There's no fighting. Like, <laughs> like when people start. What? By by the way, when it opens up on the prison, there's a slap fight going on, and I have to know what is the history of the slap fight because. For some reason, it seems like a trend that started probably when this uh, film was filming, but got very popular. And I I think it's gone now because too many people were knocked out Mm -hmm. uh, during slap fights. Mm -hmm. But I I do want to see maybe more of that. Dave, I think think it all goes back to the first Bridget Jones movie with Colin Firth and (laughs) Hugh Grant. That was a legendary (laughs) slap fight that I think just got the ball rolling. (laughs) It's true. Uh, I also like the slap fight. I had the same thought. I thought that was great. It's like, oh, wow, this is such a cool <laughs> intro. And then, yeah, we, di- we didn't get more slapping. That's too yeah. much of a slapping tease. I-, I have to say, in that aspect, this movie did not slap. Ah, uh, indeed. Yeah, I see what indeed. I did there. I, yeah. I, well, I, no, yep, I, I'm going to turn, turn the other t- cheek. T- t- and uh, I just saw, I just saw Ty become disinterested in this show. <laughs> 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 I got. I gotta um, go pick it. I gotta go pick it, guys. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah. One thing about movies like this is I inevitably start like looking at my phone, looking at my computer, picking at my navel, and every time I do that, 
it switches scenes to like the Russian mafia scene where everything's in subtitles. And I realize I went two minutes and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> well, yeah. you don't really need to learn much. You just know that those guys are, are big, burly. Uh, they have a lot of ta- if yet they got the neck tattoos and the shaved head and the goatees. They're on team Eastern Bloc. Patty? Yeah. Okay. So in this one, I, uh, Tyler has a little team. He's got this woman that was set up in the first one. Um, from mm-hmm. I think she's she, she was from I don't know New Delhi or wherever he he did his last job in the first movie and she's got her brother along and they're very kind of like outside of like their um, battle fatigues they're very kind of like social media influencer types you know <laughs> you mean their look like they, yeah they, they, yes. they don't really come yeah. across as mercenaries <laughs> he did not look like he could handle himself or. I don't know. I bought her, but you're right. She, they did look very... When we got to the point where they put on, like, uh, um, vests and picked up guns and were, like, part of the rescue mission, I was like, oh, I didn't realize they were part of, like, the ground team. I thought they were just, like, the people in the chair back at base who, mm-hmm. who like, connected the dots and picked up the payment. Now, he looks like he does, like, unboxing videos of, like, Bulgari watches. <laughs> that's his That's his YouTube feed. <laughs> okay, this is an AR-35. <laughs> now, it shoots off 36 rounds per second. I'm just going to open it up here. Do you think there's gun cleaning videos on YouTube? I'm sure, like an unboxing, but it's just about cleaning guns. I'm sure there are, yes. and if they're not... We can make a ton of money. Dave, mm. what country do you live in? Of course. <laughs> yeah, right. of course these videos exist. I live in the good old gun SA. There's probably videos on how to, like, you know, if you want to save water, you know, clean while you're showering. Um, <laughs> bring a gun into the shower. All right, so I want to hear your guys' reaction on this um, prison brawl because I saw the, the, the first film had, like I mentioned, that big, huge one shot where he's going through, and we're supposed to believe that the camera is following this guy, killing 30 people. Obviously, technically, they couldn't have done it in one take, but this one attempts to sort of do it, uh, and then they raise it up about 10 notches. And it's the first of two in the movie, but I'm curious what you guys thought about it. Uh, Okay, so my reaction was, I I don't know how long it lasted, like 20 minutes, (laughs) but it was 15 minutes into it where I went, oh my God, is this one shot? I should, like, look back and see if this is all... No, I'm not going to look back. I'm just going to assume this is all one shot and go with it. Yeah, I loved it. I I full-on loved it. Uh, I'm a sucker for wonders. I always have been. I love the ridiculous (laughs) action. And and the only thing I knew going into this was there was, like, a 20... This 21-minute runner bit. uh, Wonder bit. So once it started going, I was like, oh, this is probably it. And I I thought that was great, which set me up for disappointment, honestly, because I felt like, oh, is this what this movie's going to be? I saw it was like 80 per- 82% <laughs> yes. Rotten Tomatoes, and I was like, oh, we got like a, we've got like an action classic, and then it just, that was yep. the peak. What you want in a movie is to peak at minute 40, <laughs> uh, because then, you know, the sequences felt just redundant after that, you know, because we had, we, we covered so many modes of transportation in the Warner, right? We've <laughs> yes. got on feet, yeah. we've got on feet in the prison. Uh, and then we go, there's helicopters, there's a train, there's an, oh no, sorry, on feet, SUV to a train, and then there's helicopters surrounding yeah. the train. It's awesome. But then later we have another SUV chase and then there's more helicopters. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, this isn't, the, this is the same. It's literally the same, yeah. but worse. Like <laughs> uh, what, what, what bothered, and not to go on too long, but what, what I find the most upsetting about any movie or show is like a great idea, just not well done, just like executed on ideally. And one of, and, and I had that, that experience here. I had that feeling here. There's like a 40 second action sequence in like a, uh, like an exercise room and like a hotel or whatever the, <laughs> the high rise, oh, yes, whatever yes. that was. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like the workout room and that's a great idea for an action sequence. There's so many options, a lot, a lot of fun possibilities, a lot of like comedy there. And they gave it to us a little, but, ultimately not enough yeah. to be satisfying it was like one shot of a guy i forget even what i i, I forget how he dies i remember he, he was like he, he was on a bench press yeah. machine and um and and uh tyler rake cuts the counterweight or something and all the weights yeah. come down and smash him in the head but it was very it was yeah. shot like you're 
like behind and to the side of the machine, yeah. so you didn't quite see see like the the crunch of the skull. Yeah, now, I, I'm glad they had restraint there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the beginning, when he's when he's fighting the brother in prison before, like before the brother dies, um, when he's rescuing the family, Chris Hemsworth is fighting him. He grabs Chris Hemsworth grabs the brother on the fingers, one hand grabbing like the pinky finger and the ring finger, and the other hand grabbing the other three fingers, and then he pulls them apart. <laughs> and makes a wish and splits his <laughs> hand. And I literally went, oh, fuck, what the hell? Because it was like, it was very much like a uh, horror movie. That was Michael Myers' uh, move kill. right there, I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Hey, Craptaculars, we'll be right back. And now, back to the show. I just have two main observations on these types of action, the sequences that we were just talking about. And the first one, of course, is I think, um, you know, if you are in the market, whether you're a January 6th rioter or, you know, you work in mercenary business, you might want to rethink body armor because it doesn't work. Neither do the helmets. I mean, they're popping people. You know, and I don't know if there's armor piercing Glocks. I always thought that's sort of more of a rifle thing. I'm not a munitions expert. Yeah. But I mean, these these guys are everybody's wearing, you know. Kevlar, and it's doing nothing, nothing. Helmets, <laughs> nothing. You can punch someone wearing a helmet, and they'll feel the punch. So those are my. So obviously, armor, much like stormtrooper armor, is worthless. Uh, the yeah, second observation I was going to say is, and this is kind of a general note that, that covers the beginning through end, is clearly this must be a world of superheroes because everybody's got Wolverine healing ability. You take a knife. Oh yeah. People are getting knived in the legs, the Achilles tendons, and they're just they're just they continue going on like horror serial killers. Uh you get shot in the hand, yeah, you can still hang on to a building and hold the weight of someone else. I mean, everybody is Wolverine <laughs> yeah. in this movie. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Right after the first runner, or during the first runner, the first one shot, I was like, you know what? I want this dude. I think it was Sam Hargrave who directed this movie, who is a stunt coordinator and second unit director primarily. And I thought his action was fantastic. I thought the one shots were fantastic. And I wanted him so much to do a G.I. Joe movie, like a really good true to the characters G.I. Joe movie because he could do some fun, fantastic action sequences with those characters. Well, Dave, you should, uh, you know, I'm sure he's on social somewhere. Send him a note. <laughs> I will. We'll get him on Cinema Craptaculous. We'll say, hi, like... we eviscerated your movie, but we think you'd be good for G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with Ty, though. These, you know, it was thrilling. There were a couple of moments, like, I think, you know, you're getting so much thrown at you, it's it's a little bit of white noise in a way, like you said, you kind of check out. But I actually was like, I think I said a few times, like, holy shit, holy shit, because, you know, there is something kind of fun. I think that's, I think that's the selling point. I think there's a danger if this becomes a, a true franchise of them feeling like they got to, like, okay, now kind of like, you know, it happens. They just up the ante. And like the Fast and the Furious movies, all of a sudden we're in space now. I think that, you know, the film's strength still sort of will will rest on showing us that the Hemsworth character is convincingly doing this. If you start just kind of getting it too crazy, then again, other than him surviving, you know, like with his healing factor, um, I think it just becomes a little monotonous. So maybe, uh, I think to Ty's point, if they had just found a few more creative moments in the action, it would have made it a little less white noisy, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I'm not going to criticize because yeah. they storyboarded this, and that was impressive because there was a lot of components. Yeah, yeah, I thought it, it heightened really well, too, uh, the the Warner. Yeah, I, I just wanted, I should have just rewatched it immediately and just taken a nap, honestly, the, the Warner. <laughs> here, here, uh, here, here is a question, and I know you were, you were going to chime in, Dave, but this just came to me, and I don't think they talk about it in the, in the movie, and I, don't, I haven't seen the first one, so I don't know. What do you think you get paid to to extract a human from from Eastern <laughs> European jail? Like, well, this this feels like at least like a seven figure contract, Not enough. right? Like you would you would hope. I think that's a really good question because it brings up the bigger question of why is she so important that it's everyone's willing to sacrifice everything they have. <laughs> in order to rescue this family. I'm like, does she have dirt on someone? And I ask that seriously because I like, I get the idea of like, oh, I want to go in and rescue these people because they're in-laws of mine. But then when like 
uh, his girlfriend's brother dies, when she gets all shot up. I'm like, what? what's the cost here? Like, one of the turning points in the story is the son in the family calls up his uncle, who's like the head of the mafia, and is like, hey, we're right here. Come get us. Because he's confused and an idiot and 14. And I would have been like, if I was Chris Hemsworth, I would have been like, what did you do? And the kid just stares at me about to cry. I'd be like, eh, fuck it. I'm going. See you guys. Good luck with this. <laughs> but then you don't get paid, I think, right? You have to like uh, see it through yeah. until the bad guy dies to get your, your, your check uh, through direct deposit. Yeah. Dave, you brought up a point point about that film that kind of big major plot hole was so basically they're on a plane the kid decided to go with his uncle and leave his mom which sets up a a betrayal because he uses well he's actually on the plane sorry he's on chris's plane being extracted with the family but he sort of plays benedict arnold he steals his phone he steals his phone i'm sorry don't you think uh tyler would have a i don't know a password on his phone (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's not like he like said, hey, hey, uh, I'll keep an eye on your phone. Oh, can I play Geometry Dash? Can you just unlock it real quick? I'm going to play some Roblox. It's one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, wouldn't he see his, his call history? And just go, wait, wait, what's this number? This uh, this number is in, uh, oh, it's in, it's in uh, you know, Belarus. Or, <laughs> well, it's like, I didn't make the, that call. And he calls back, the, uh, who's this? <laughs> I, who is this? You're pitching a more interesting movie, John. That's against that's against the law here. <laughs> not to not to go back. This is just a quick ob- observation I had. Something I never really thought about before. Like early on in the movie, we go to the brothers' farm compound. Or do we know what that was exactly? That's like a compound. There's like cattle. There's like it's cows a- and whatnot. <laughs> yes. Uh, and that's where the warden comes, and then that's- they jam a, a what like a like a like a a pitchfork into the warden's neck and then kill the warden. Whatever. That's not even my point. My point is when the warden arrives at this brother's farm compound, uh, there's lots of cows around. And as the warden is walking (laughs) to the brother, we hear the cows mooing. And at that moment, I realized, oh, they had to ADR all these moves. <laughs> and then they had to be, like, judicious about where they put the moves so it wouldn't be distracting or it wouldn't be too funny. Uh, I thought that was great. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, but, you know, AI is going to replace all those cows that do that voiceover, by the way. <laughs> do you think uh, during the ADR session, they kept making the, hey, do you think it needs more cowbell joke? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a guy who yeah. made that joke unironically, and he made it a lot, and then he was the least popular guy <laughs> in, in the room. Uh, yeah. And then and then the whole room descended into, like, everybody doing horrible Christopher Walken uh, impressions. The yeah, and yeah. finally the, the sound Walkins. guys, all right, guys, guys, come on, come on. I get it. What do you, what do, you do, Nicholson impressions next? Come on, stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this film tried to mine oh. um, emotional beats, particularly as we realized, you know, that, that, that this, you know, Chris's ex-wife, which was not who was not in the first film, uh, played by Olga. I'm going to mess her name up so we can try. She's been in she was in a Bond movie and she was in Black Widow. Uh, she comes in as his ex-wife and they have the, this sort of moment of understanding. Well, how do you think the film did with its um, emotional beats? Do you think it succeeded or do you feel like, you know, ah, stay in your lane action film? I mean, for an action film, it did fine. You know, it, it was like... It's really hard because I think when you have that kind of action and then you try to jump into, I left my family and I feel guilty about it and my son died and now I'm dealing with that. I just think it, it's hard to kind of stay on board as a viewer, uh, regardless of how... I, I think it was the best it could have been. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I think I agree. I think that's a good point. Yeah, I, I thought it was totally fine. The emotional beats are fine. They felt almost a bit like, you know, we have to have emotional beats in here. So yeah. <laughs> here they yes, here they are. Yeah. Here they are, guys. Hope you like them. Yeah. Uh, but then I was just thinking off your point, Dave, like, oh, I wonder if part of the reason it wasn't funny, because there was no, there were real no jokes in the movie, <laughs> no. was because it felt the need to balance, like, the kind of brutality of the action with these family beats and that just left no room for a comedy the only joke that i remember and i wrote it down because it made me depressed <laughs> was uh there's a there's a bit early on in the first act where ooh, i i don't even remember the characters it's not hemsworth the bad guys i think it's some people on hemsworth's team they they make tiktok references do you remember this 
yes this bit and it's yeah just, the the um, joke is literally like i i look at tiktok <laughs> Like, like that. That's the. It's like five lines about TikTok, but the punchline is based that it's like, look at me, a grown man on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I actually make that joke every morning when I get out of bed. And how's it do? It, just as good as it did right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> My dog groans and rolls over. <laughs> well, they say that an action film is only as good as its villain, and unfortunately, a lot of times, and I don't mean this in any kind of cultural slam. But a lot of times when you get these Eastern European bad guys, they, they don't always carve them out with a lot of uh, panache and personality. They, they kind of err on the side of let's make them brutal and brooding yeah. and, and really badass and scary. And, and I, I almost wonder if this film could have benefited because he like he's, he's one of those villains that will just drill his right hand man if he says something askew or, or critical of the plan. And he does that. He drills the guy in front of his nephew watching. And um, <laughs> and I wondered if like they rendered him a little more uh, Bond like and gave him some quip or maybe have some lavish, you know, like ways of killing people or something that would make them a little more interesting rather than just brooding guy with neck tattoos and body armor who just he just kills people outright, you know? Yeah, I agree. It, it, he was a single note at best. I also thought it was interesting that all, all his soldiers were like ninjas. I mean, they all excelled at whatever kind of combat was necessary at that moment. <laughs> There was not, I would love to see a f film like this where there's a couple guys who are just kind of useless or like, no, 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 I really just do automatic weapons. I don't do hand-to-hand -hand combating. So, <laughs> like, I'm not going to get into that shit. I man. don't know, Dave. Some of these guys get went were dispatched very quickly. So when you say they were ninjas, I'm like, I think there were some guys that may have been like some rookie ninjas because his little partner, Nick, by the way, Nick... <laughs> Khan, his uh, the, the his partner in this. She's not. I don't think she's his girlfriend. I think they kind of hint that that she cares about him, especially in the at the beginning when she's by his side in recuperation. But uh, balls on that. That's his girlfriend. He is. They they hint at it. They they really try to make that the connections there. Yeah. Well, now now it makes me a little sad thinking about like these new ninjas who like are excited for their first day being mercenaries, and then they're immediately <laughs> killed. Immediately killed by this uh, staggeringly handsome Australian man. <laughs> Could you imagine if if uh, the Russian mafia guy had an HR department? <laughs> be like, uh, what's the problem? Uh, I've been sent out to uh, kill Chris uh, Tyler Rake. Okay, uh, and do you have a problem with that? Yeah, well, I, I, I I've got nowhere with this bit. I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to, I'm going to bail right now. I mean, but then he would be like, wait, the, the guy that died, the guy that died like like two weeks ago, like that guy, Tyler Rake, he died, he died in India. No, he didn't. I think he might be a god. I don't want to. I will, The god is going to kill me. The third film, I would do that. I would these. I think word would get out about him. He's immortal. He's he's cheated death. <laughs> he kills people like with just without a care in the world. Like Colonel Sanders does chicken. Yeah, if I I would start the third film where like he shows up and a bunch of whatever ninjas. I would have one of the ninjas see Hemsworth and go, oh, fuck. Yeah, they. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, he needs a friend. He needs a friend. Maybe I'll be his friend. Maybe I'll, my strategy to survive was just say, hey, buddy, I'll buy you a beer. You want to you wanna go to yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings? I know where the rest of the ninjas are sleeping. You can take them all out in their bunks. <laughs> yeah. The other big question is how much money is this guy spending to kill this family? Because he, he sends all his soldiers out. He loses three to four helicopters, loses eight SUVs, all kinds of ammunition. That's, those costs add up up yeah i mean that's like what we would like to send to ukraine yeah well you gotta think uh they fund it all through through the milk the milk which we again established earlier in this uh <laughs> yeah. in yeah. this farm compound it's it's very good <laughs> yeah. the milk is very good <laughs> Yeah, they make a wonderful cheese, <laughs> <laughs> as do we on our show. Yeah. Well, on that note, should we should we rate this? Yeah, sounds good. Cinema Craptaculous ratings. Okay, so we have a three tiered rating scale here. The top tier is Cinema Craptaculous, and for this film, Boomtacular. 
The second tier is Craptaculus. This is good on a rainy afternoon or a banger. And then utter crap. This is the lowest. Avoid this film for this week. It's Pop Fizzle Dud. <laughs> <laughs> So, I think that was the sound of one of those ninjas' guns when he went up against Hemsworth. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent! Ah, fuck! He's gonna kill me. I'm. I've only been on the job five minutes. <laughs> I didn't even get my insurance cards yet. <laughs> you didn't tell me I'd be going up against a six foot four Australian with blue eyes. It's over. I'm supposed to be in bookkeeping. I don't know. I I applied for the bookkeeper job. Honestly, that job might be harder. What with all the budgetary concerns. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Ty, you're our guest. Why don't you go first? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, I would put it in the middle. Let's go with uh, it's a banger because it's not like it's not like terrible. Like it's fine, but again, it, it yeah. peaks. It peaks with the oneer. The oneer is like legitimately great. And the rest of it's totally fine, if not a little boring and and stereotypical. Uh, so let's go. Let's go, banger. Yeah. Let's go, banger. Yeah, I will say. I, I'd say it's craptaculous. It's banger. I kind of agree with all your points. I enjoyed it. It looks fantastic. Um, if you've got a decent TV, I don't know. I'm, I'm always curious when mm-hmm. I see these Netflix films and Amazon the, the originals how how I would perceive them if I were in the in at the cinema on the big screen. You know, would it, I can't just pause and go and get another beer and stuff. Forced to watch the whole thing with the surround and stuff. So I think it actually would have, you know, been pretty entertaining. It would have been loud as shit. And yeah. I, I like Chris Hemsworth, so I think I, I always give him a pass, which is not really fair because I think he should be judged on his own merits. And I think he worked hard. I did see him trying to do a lot of his own stunts, although, you know, there's just only so much you can do. But I, I, would, I would actually... Probably see the third one. Uh, wouldn't? Yeah. Would I, I'm sure they will make one. I will say uh, I agree with all you guys. Craptaculus. This one's a banger. I resisted watching this, and when I turned it on, I got sucked in. That's partially because of the director. It's Chris Hemsworth and the rest of the cast. Um, they really elevated. They they made something really entertaining. Now, one of the problems I had with it was the violence felt so real in parts that it just it's just not in me to enjoy it as much anymore. You know, like when I was a kid, Rambo, oh, g- give me a fistful of Rambo every day. Um, oh my God, that sounded really sick. <laughs> But, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. I just let that just sort of sit there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So did Rambo, but but now it just feels a little harsh. But then it gets, but then the violence would amp up to almost cartoony. The shoot, uh, the shot sequence would amp up to almost cartoony, and and it, I felt more comfortable there when it's more cartoony, and, and that's why I think I gravitate more to the superhero movies now because they're just their violence is ridiculous and uh, so out of the realm of reality as to no longer be violent but just entertainment. But aren't we in this sense. world though where there is sort of this cachet? Where we're now, everything is kind of like a video game. Maybe it started with the first John Wick. Maybe, maybe we don't even have to look at one movie. Maybe it's just the kind of the era we're in, where it's all digital it squibs. With Rambo. It's all digital squibs, so you can pretty much just flood yeah. a scene with bullets. There'd be so many people with like bleeding eardrums, by the way, because guns going off right at, <laughs> right at their heads. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and we we forgot one big moment of comedy at the very end, after the big drag out, like you know. 10 stabs each to each other Hemsworth against the bad guy they're lying there exhausted and the guy says I will never stop and what does Hemsworth do? Oh, yes. <laughs> he just, just casually shoots, shoots him in the head. In the head. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't look just just does a you know it was almost like it was like yeah. the um, uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon moment in uh, yes, Captain America that's exactly uh, what Civil I War of. was like I hate you but it was like only you know this involved yeah. a guy getting his brains blown out but um, so the, <laughs> yeah. violent comedy in that moment <laughs> yeah I did forget about that beat I did forget about that beat I, 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 I have I have another question um, unless you wanted to was there more to the review I don't mean to interrupt <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, no. okay, good. No. Cool. Uh, so uh, I agree with you, John. I think there's definitely going to be a third one. And from yes. what I read, because I, I can't stop talking about these oneers. Apparently, uh, the first in the first movie, the oneers twelve minutes. From what I read, I haven't seen it. The second movie, it's twenty-one minutes. So when we get this third extraction, 
when Jack Extraction comes back to fin- to end the trilogy, how long is that runner going to be? It's going to be like Birdman. Oh, so the whole movie, the whole movie. Why not? That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. One of my notes was this is the action version of Alfred Hitchcock's Rope. Mm. Oh my God, this reference has to be cut out. <laughs> but it is um, <laughs> like it is a film that Alfred Hitchcock did in in the '60s where it's all one shot. But they had to do trickery because canisters of film only held seven minutes of film. So there's a lot of like drifting into the back of someone's back and then drifting back out to make the transition. But it's the whole film is one shot. Mm. Well, I brought up Birdman because that was kind of like the the first sort of film that that in the modern era that did that. And I think once you do that, it's kind of like the gig is up like, oh, we've seen that. Yeah, you could conceivably try to make it look like it's all one film is a oneer. But I'm like, well. That's the point. I, no, this is this is what it's going to be. It's going to be. It, it, they're going to call it a tour, <laughs> and it's two one shots side by side: the hero and the villain. Ooh. And you just see the whole movie played down from each of their POVs, real time, left and right. Dave, wasn't that uh, a show on Fox starring Kiefer Sutherland? No, you're thinking of 24. That 24, doesn't show. Yeah. 24 wasn't a r- oneer. It was. It was just real time. This is two. One are side by side, different POVs. And uh, as soon as this writer strike is over, Ty, I want you to write that. Uh, that legitimately sounds awesome. Although also a lot of work because you're basically writing two movies, yes. <laughs> two concurrent yeah, movies true. with a budget of what? <laughs> the first, the first billion. <laughs> yeah. Feed it into a video game AI, and it'll spit it out for you. Yeah, it'll be yeah, it'll be very well well uh, well written if you've spent any time on that. Uh, but no, it'll be like the first billion dollar budget movie if you have two concurrent yeah. action movies at the same time. Uh, it's pretty good. I genuinely like that idea. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so interesting. The thing is, there'd be like moments of silence on each side so that you could focus on the other right, side. Right, exactly. Yeah. Bathroom breaks, all that. Finally get to yes, finally get yeah, to see yeah. somebody go to the bathroom. <laughs> on the right hand side, you see Chris Hemsworth just like killing people. And on the left hand side, you see the next Eastern Bloc Mafia guy sitting on a toilet, <laughs> flipping through it, <laughs> flipping through TikTok <laughs> yeah. on his phone. Gotta bring back the TikTok joke. That's uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, that's I, the thing, because like obviously if you showed what's going on with the other guy at that moment, it could be just you know, eating breakfast. Because, <laughs> you know, if there are different time zones, sure. he's asleep. One side goes completely yeah. black as he's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is good. This is good. You got to cut this part out because yeah. it will be stolen. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Sam Hargrave's going to be like, that's the idea. <laughs> and I'll be like, do it with G.I. Joe, man. And he goes, no, you have one good idea in a lifetime and you just used yours. <laughs> <laughs> so Ty, where can people find you? Where is there anything other than at Disney Studios? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's I've got a question the for picket you. Sign. What <laughs> yeah. what clever thing did you write on your picket sign? Like what is the thing you wrote on your picket sign that you're most proud of? That's a great question. And going uh going into the strike, I wrote like uh, like a dozen jokes that I was going to choose from depending upon the studio. But I didn't, I was out of town basically the first week of the strike. Um, So when I came back with my list of jokes on my phone, I came to signs that were pre-written. Basically they ran out of signs, new signs to write jokes on. So for the last month and a half, <laughs> month and a half, I've been uh, holding up other people's jokes. So the the answer the answer is zero, nothing. I've not written anything clever on any sign. And it's, oh my god, that that that's for a writer. That's got to be like wearing someone else's like underwear when they've just gone like working out. Yeah, and this is a joke that's been told, but it is so funny to walk up to the to the picket and you see like dozens of signs and you're very snobbily going through them. To find the joke that's like the best or the closest to what you would have written, because there's yeah, a lot. Yeah, honestly, yeah, that there's represents a lot of, there's, you. It, there's, it's very clear that not all writers are comedy writers. <laughs> and it's you should be like you're sitting there holding it, going, like, "Yeah, I didn't choose this one. This one sucks." But I was it was the last one they had, and then it's like you know the person over there, like I wrote that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when I saw those, that was the one thing about the strike that I was like, "Oh fuck, I'd fail at this too," because. <laughs> It's bad enough to have to be in a writer's room and fight to get your joke across. Now you're on strike, so essentially not working, 
And then you're just getting into a room with a bunch of writers trying to get your joke across again. It's like, <laughs> when does that end? Yeah, it doesn't. It's cruel life. It's cruel life, man. Oh, you know what, though? But wait till the actors join in. Then it'll be like, an, hey, you want me to write your sign? Uh, I'll write your sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. will, will you be able to do that? Will people like, will your like uh, uh, union manager call you up and be like, hey, I I saw that you wrote Eric Estrada's sign <laughs> and uh, you can't do that. He has to write his own. Well, I think <laughs> probably the answer is it's frowned upon except for uh, Estrada. There's a carve out for Estrada, and you can you <laughs> can you can, you can pitch in as many jokes as as you want. All I could say is I wish I owned stock in Cameo <laughs> like like a month ago because if the writers do strike, the only income they're going to be able to make is doing cameos. Then the value of that app's going to skyrocket. Uh, well, uh, I think that implies that uh, people would pay to have a writer give them a message. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. I, 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 uh, so. Well, what, what's your cameo, Ty? Shoot, give us your cameo. We'll put it in the podcast notes. Ah, uh, this is too much pressure. Have you done cameo? Have you paid for cameos before? It's pretty fun. I've gotten like you can. Yeah. There's like a, a a few random people that no one's heard of. They're only a dollar, which is obviously as cheap as it goes. So as a joke, I've spent a yeah. dollar to get this like random DJ <laughs> to give friends birthday wishes. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's awesome. great. That's a good call. Yeah. That's a good call. You know, I'd like to get like a hundred one dollar celebrities to give one person like birthday wishes just to, <laughs> I don't know, destroy their email. Account. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I, today I'm having a lot of good half ideas. Yeah. Like I'm like, 50%. That's all thing. you need. It rounds up to one. That's how math works. <laughs> yeah. Dave, I think I think when we promote this episode, we're gonna uh, our little headliner should have like uh like you about to say your your um your idea and we'll like beep it out. Beep. Yeah. And then it'll be like D- Ty would be like, Oh man, that idea is amazing. And that's how <laughs> <it goes. laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Pull that that's out, good. it'll get stolen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ty, thank you very much for joining us on this Cinema Craptaculous journey. <laughs> this is Dave. Ever present with me is... John! It always sucks when Steph's not here because it, it's like, and ever present with me is John! Dave! <laughs> and like, just one person feels weird. Ty, this is where you jump in and you say, and Ty. And I'll just edit it so it sounds seamless. <laughs> okay, great. And Ty! Oh, it's perfect. And remember that a bad movie is just as hard to make as a good one. Just a lot easier to make fun of. And in the old days, we used to sing songs to tie into the movie, Ty. <laughs> ah. uh, but we can, I don't know what we'd sing for extraction. Uh, son, you'll be a dentist. I was totally thinking You that. got a habit to causing people pain. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that's all I got. Extraction. A dental method, too. Cinema Craptaculous is your podcast destination for all things movies, good and bad, streaming series, good and bad, and pop culture, good, bad, and the ugly. You get a totally different show every week, such as People Also Watched with Adam, Dave, and Tara. They're three industry insiders who always find the hilarity in the big-budget feature and the lesser-known feature you may have missed. There is, of course, the expanded universe. This is your place to geek out. John Doc and S'more are your geek experts to talk about what's going on in the world of uh, streaming series, movies, superheroes, pretty much any showbiz geek topic, they're going to talk about it. And, of course, there's the show that started it all, Cinema Craptaculous, with Stephanie, John, and Dave. You don't even need to have seen the movies these guys talk about to have a good time. So, what are you waiting for? Go and subscribe to Cinema Craptaculous wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. 